Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to today's webinar. My name is uh, Filip Radukic. I'm a product manager and senior consultant here at CXperts, and as such, responsible for the UPV web services, browser based viewing, and associated technologies. Today, we are continuing our new webinar series concentrating on various real life use cases. These use cases will show some examples on how the UPV ecosystem can be implemented to make processes run more smoothly, how to save time and effort, and utilize the various features of UPV at its best. <clears throat> Today's part seven of the series will be covering a topic relevant to basically design and engineering departments, operations and maintenance um, of owners and operators, as well as for engineering partners and EPCs in general, and that's conceptual design. As always, this session will be recorded and we will provide you the link to the recording subsequently by email. And at any time during the webinar, feel free to use the chat panel or the questions panel better to say, and state your questions and I will try to answer as many as possible after the live demo. Okay, great. Then let's jump straight into our agenda for today. Um, we're going to look at the challenges and use cases with conceptual design. So the live demo will in, include an introduction to UPV sketching in general, the challenge, how do I create content? How do I, for example, create a catalog? And the use cases of how to work with conceptual designs and proof of concepts, and um, how to collaborate on designs. There are many situations where you would like to make a quick draft to visualize an idea without having to install tons of tools or pay great amounts for licensing fees just to make a proof of concept if your idea would even work. So you might want to create several designs, compare them to each other, or just discuss issues with colleagues who are possibly working remotely, taking into account how COVID has changed our way of working in the past three years. And the challenges are numerous. Not all of them seem to have an easy solution that most employees would benefit from, let alone the savings um, this would bring. Today, we'll be looking at a different approach to solve this. This and more examples is what we're going to look at today in detail. So what are the challenges? Many times software required is complicated to use. What is the risk? Well, high training efforts, costing time and money. The hardware must be accordingly strong. This means most design programs just won't work on just any machine. So you do have certain hardware requirements, um, which leads to that software is actually avoided for minor changes and uh, a lot of times it's just pen and paper changes, especially when we're talking about changes done by operations. The risk is the minor changes get lost in the models and documentation that we basically get a big delta between as built and uh, as is on site. And one of the major challenges is also communication inside and across teams when we're actually discussing changes, ideas, and similar. And time and effort is required, meetings, design reviews, just for conceptual designs before we've actually even started uh, really working. So what is our solution? You can use UPV sketching for 3D and P9D. The effect is save on time and training and create content easily on a very simple, easy to use level. And that leads also to creating conceptual design in no time, basically. You can visualize your ideas easily and with little effort. You can create multiple suggestions and compare. So visualize different solution and find the one that works best for you. And last but not least, collaborate inside and across teams easily. 
by saving time and cost, um, but discussing ideas and possible issues. In the workflow system, which is also combined with our browser-based viewing, making hardware requirements um, an issue of the past because you can basically use any type of client to access the models. But what does it actually look like on a day-to-day, -day, in day-to-day -day business? Let's go to the live demo. So some of you have probably already worked with um, the UPV sketching. Um, For those of you that um, don't know um, sketching yet, I would actually start with the Kelly PID sketching first. Um, so when you do conceptual design in PNIDs, all you have to do is basically add a PID sketch and say, okay, this is my concept of one. And for this, I'll just basically create a bypass with a pump somewhere here and um, the features I, I have or I can use here is straight lines, circles for example representing a pump, or squares for some equipment or um, just adding valves here and also a valve in the bypass and with this, I've actually created, and I can colorize it, uh, created a, a very simple um, sketch here that will actually um, bring us further in our planning phase. So besides using these ready-made objects, we can also use catalogs, um, for example, um, saying, okay, um, I want to remove this pump here and put a, a diaphragm pump in here and basically do a conceptual design at the top level. Why, am, why do I keep saying uh, conceptual design? Because we're not changing the original files. We're basically putting a layer on top of it and by turn, turning it on and off, um, I can go back to my initial view, so the original document is not harmed in any way, but I can create multiple designs here and uh, turn them on and off as required. So let's go back to 3D. Same thing goes for 3D. I can create a 3D sketch here and I'll call it concept O2. In this case, um, you see I have the same menu on the right hand side appearing, um, giving me ground plates, beam, um, columns, beams, slabs, squares, vertical or horizontal equipment, spheres, piping, valves, reducers. So We'll use some of them one by one to actually show use case. Uh, let's say I want to extend my model here, placing ground plates somewhere in Nirvana and basically moving it to the position I need. And you see, I can use uh, snap points here by just clicking on my arrow for motion and holding it to an area um, that I want, want it aligned with. So let me pull this out a bit further. So it's easy to see what I'm doing here. So just click and drag to this point and you see we get the green circle for alignment. And the same thing we can do with um, the arrows here. So it's always good to have a part of the area of the surface free so I can align it with it. And the same um, as we did with the moving part, I can also use the scaling and have it aligned with the existing ground plate. 
So the next thing we're going to position on our uh, ground plate here in sketching will be a platform. So the platform is a very special um, object that we can use because when you go to attributes, scroll down, you see I can add a column, I can add a row, and they will be automatically added here. And when I then pick the scaling feature, I can actually um, scale the whole platform and it's still, it's not one single object, but it's still individual objects. So I can say, okay, I don't need this. I don't need this. And I have a platform in basically no time that I can work with. So let's place, for example, a vessel, a vertical vessel on this platform, scale it to size as I need it, move it a bit further over here, and now I can add some piping to this just by clicking on piping, and I'm not taking the middle of the vessel on purpose right now, so I can pull this out. Just by using these scaling handles, I can do quick routing for quick proof of concept. And um, even if I find out, okay, I didn't hit the middle of my vessel here, all I have to do is click on my pipe, go to move and adapt it. And you see that the elbow up in front will just go along. Depending on the degree of freedom, all lines adapt automatically. What else can we do with this basic routing features um, of your PV sketching? I could, for example, um, add a reducer somewhere, let's say here. So right now you see it's shown a bit darker. Why is that? Because we have eight inches or um, 200 millimeters on both ends of the reducer. So let's actually change this to six inches downstream. And you see that the pipeline at the other end of the reducer automatically adapts to um, actually fulfill this requirement we set through the reducer. Additionally, we can put in some flanges or a globe valve here and a valve down here or up here and uh, rotate them in position as necessary or move them along. So this is not uh, definitely not a design tool for some uh, construction design. But when we're talking about trying out if anything works before we actually start planning in any of the major authoring tools, this is actually helping us and saving us a lot of time here. But um, additionally to these objects, you can also use catalogs to add objects freely, for example, I could say equipment, pump, place a pump here. So this pump is a parametric object, parametric symbol. So uh, when I click on one of these white balls here, the handles, I can adapt form and size of the object according to the parameters available, or I can also I'll just leave this one. Um, or for example, um, use transportation and have a bundle puller placed somewhere. Or let's say an auto crane. So this was a bit big here. And all these objects. Um, have additional handlers. So where do, do these objects come from? That's our challenge. How do I create a catalog here? Um, especially for um, those of you that have been working with um, S3D, they know um, how challenging actually creating um, a parametric symbol can be when you actually um, 
have to program all of this. So here comes um, another tool um, from the experts that's actually help you not just create these um, parametric symbols for S3D, but also create them as changeable, movable um, objects within um, UPV, and that's the 3D symbol designer. Um, I'll just um, do an example here and uh, open up, for example, the pump, um, actually the crane we just had. And um, it's basically just a graphical definition of the object and the parameters with some default values. And um, this file can easily be saved away. Um, you might have seen the file format we were using was Excel. Um, and this Excel file can be just placed in your model folder and is available as a catalog object. Okay, but this was just a short view at the 3D Symbol Designer. Um, there will probably also be soon some webinars showing uh, again, some features off of the 3D symbol design again. So in this case, let me remove the equipment I added here. Uh, and let's say, okay, um, I might not like this design here. Uh, actually, I want to do uh, create a, a second concept here for this. So I can just add concept 03. And you see that all my sketching has disappeared here. Um, and go back to objects and say, okay, I just want to make some type of easy setup here. Instead of placing some type of ground plate, just add some objects here. And that's actually my second design by holding down the control key. I can mark them up, change color, and then adapt them. Size by scaling. So and again, if I want to make them at the even height, all I have to do is click and um, hold this handle for the scaling and pull it to the surface I want to align it with. So now that we have two different concepts here, I can go back and forth between them to see which one works best for me. So that way we can easily um, go ahead and compare different solutions before we decide on one to work with. But how does this actually work when you want to collaborate, for example, um, through the web. So um, most of you who have been attending our uh, webinars already know about our um, browser-based viewing uh, solutions with the UPV web services. Um, and um, with these, you can also activate the workflow system, which will allow us to actually create workflows to handle exactly these issues here. So um, in this case, um, instead of um, you know creating an, an all new uh, issue here, we can actually have a look at um, the previews to see which solution I would use as an example. So here we got suggestion two. Um, that looks good. So let's actually open up this issue. And you can see down here, um, there was a discussion, um, like an internal written uh, design review within the team or across teams. Well, which solution do we prefer? And the different stages can also be viewed in a preview, saying, okay, here we have rotated. Uh, this valve here, this one has not been rotated yet. So um, 
this has been corrected, is this okay now, and so on. So um, basically asking from the team, is this as you thought it should be? So you can add comments, um, work together on objects. How does that work? Well, once um, our ticket or our um, design or proof of concept is uh, done, um, we can actually share this through the workflow system um, and um, have also multiple suggestions ready here, compare them, and then, for example, add a comment like I did here previously. I personally prefer, prefer suggestion one because suggestion two does not seem to fulfill the requirements. And um, if I were logged in as a different user here, I could also post a comment and say, um, um, I agree with solution one, hit save, and basically my files are stored again, I agree with solution one, and eventually you can even um, create a PDF report um, to actually get the result of the discussion for the documentation. So I'm trying to give you a, a quick overview of the functionalities. Um, one additional point when we're talking about um, design reviews, or actually conceptual designs, um, is well, okay, great, I've done a concept design now, but um, what if I want to actually recreate it in my authoring tool now? So um, there's actually also quite an easy solution for this. I can export my concept as DGN or UPVC files. So with the UPVC files, I can uh, generate them for the future as part of our 3D model together with the other UPVC files or as a DGN file that I can again reference in be it um, PDS, S3D, PDMS, um, Plan 3D, um, almost all of them allow us to um, add a DGN file as a 3D reference. So we can also import this in our authoring tool to use this for some detailed uh, engineering. So I hope I was able to give you um, a quick overview um, on how UPV can actually assist you with um, conceptual designs. There's probably a lot more uh, solutions here uh, that we, or a lot more challenges that um, you're facing from in your day-to-day -day business uh, that we couldn't cover here. So feel free to contact us um, if you have uh, some specific requests and um, we can have a look at, at your issues together and um, give you recommendation how to uh, actually pick the best approach to get the solution ready the way you need it. <laughs>